Hi everybody, my name is Katie. Welcome back for episode 10 of the Creating Christmas Island series. Today I'm going to be working on the Christmas tree farm with a little bit of a pumpkin farm and orchard behind it. Let's go take a look at the space. I'm in the top right hand corner of my island. It's mostly clear and ready for the build. You can see in the back here, I have placed my fruit trees. They seem a little out of place for winter, so I've tucked them in back and fenced them off. And then down as we come into the area, you'll see I have the rest of the river that needs to come up into the space. And I've mapped out a little bit of where some of the structure will go. As I start building in the area, the first thing I do is start working on what's going to be a farm. Now, at the moment, we only have pumpkins, but they did just release an update. We know those pumpkins are still gonna be good for Thanksgiving, and we're hoping that they add additional produce to grow in the future. But until then, at least the pumpkins will go up here and I'll have room if they do add things to grow at another time. I also really like the way that the pumpkins look. And if you don't grow the pumpkins all the way to full, then they look like they could be other types of crops too. So I definitely wanted to add space up here for that. I started with a little bit of a smaller area. Uh, it does grow and I decide to make a larger farm but it was really fun to put all of the elements that are pretty new from the Halloween update and utilize them. Even though I'm on a Christmas farm, every time they add something new to the game, it really does contribute a lot to the way we design and create, which is why updates are so exciting. You can see here, I decided to go ahead and extend that fence all the way down. I put the stall and the little bonds I shelf out just to see what kind of space. They aren't customized yet, but I wanted to see what kind of space they took up. Remember, you can do that before you really settle on items. You can set them out and just see how they look in the area that you're working on. And that helped give me the square underneath that was going to be the space that they're sitting on. And then I go ahead and customize them. I used the barn stall pattern that I did from the reindeer barn. I just liked the red feel to it. And I know it doesn't make perfect sense, but it made me happy. And then I did just the same pattern, but with a window panel to put in the back of this little greenhouse. And I will include all those patterns will be in my custom design patterns. And you can access my creator code in the description below or you can come through the dream address to visit my island. As I continue working on this greenhouse, I put all the cute little plants and things up in the area, uh, items that would grow, whether it was winter or not, because in theory, this would be surrounded by glass and just make it look full and rich. You'll notice that I pull the stalls out just a little bit from the simple panels. I like the way that that gives us the appearance of a slope. So consider doing that when you use the stalls. Remember just to angle them out to half a space will give you the look that there might be a sloping roof to it. Once I'm finished with the greenhouse, I get down to the trees. It is the Christmas tree farm area after all. So I go to the back of the area and set. I had a bunch of pre-grown trees so that I would see the spacing. And now I'm switching over to my design because I need to see the way that these trees are going to lay out in the area. This is that little green dot that I use, the spacer. It utilizes the ability to count the way that I'm going. And I really appreciate having a visual as I'm putting things in the area. I don't need it through the whole area. Just one line is enough. I can eyeball the rest of it from there. So I do recommend you can use any pattern if you're trying to space things out. This is just my go-to pattern for all kinds of any type of measurement in this game, I use this little pattern. I fill the entire area with trees, which was originally my plan, but it wasn't until just a little after this, I remembered that I have my river that needs to come up through the space still. So as I start looking at that river and, and putting it through, I'm thinking about the path it's going to take. It can't go between the trees. The trees won't grow. There's not enough space. So then I'm kind of moving around the area a little bit. I know I wanted to put a bridge up in here, so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll create a space for the bridge. 
But any time in this game when you can make a diagonal bridge, I will usually choose to do so because the diagonal bridges are just so beautiful. So I'm, I'm looking in the area. I thought, okay, well, where does it connect? And here you can see I walk up. I see where it goes and up and down. Uh, okay, I've got trees in the way. I don't know why it didn't occur to me that I was going to have trees in the middle of where the river was going to have to go. So here I put some water in. I, I pick up the trees that are in the way. I put in a little bit more water and pick up the trees and, and adjust and think, okay, definitely diagonal bridge. If I've got to cut through the space and I have to move where the trees are going, then I'm definitely going to do a diagonal bridge. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm preparing the land for a diagonal bridge. This was pretty late at night. I'm good at diagonal bridges, but man, do I struggle. I just keep hitting the wrong spot. I know you guys probably know what I'm talking about when you have days like that, when you're like, go here, no, and then the shovel goes to the other spot. It, I wish we had a bounding box, a spot on the ground where we could see where the shovel was going to go. But it works. I get it in place. I get the gyro paid so that the bridge will be built the next day and kind of get back to sculpting this river a little bit. Now, I didn't intend to separate the trees, but I really enjoy the way that this made larger trees on one side of the water and then room for smaller trees on the other side. And so when I show you that after the trees start growing, I really prefer the look. So it was a happy transition. I'm putting in a mishmash little path in this area and I'm using quite a few different path patterns. The light dirt, a little bit of dark dirt, the wood pattern and the brick pattern. And I'm just going back and forth randomly through all the spaces. Since I decided to put the bridge up further, that also gave me room for more farm space. So you'll see I've gone ahead and I've transitioned this whole bottom area. I, I love it. The farms are beautiful. I hope we get more produce, but the pumpkins themselves make me really happy. So I've got more space for pumpkins. And I go ahead and transition the path from the farm area up into where the path goes. You can keep this type of concept in mind. You can go back and forth with just two different type paths and create a little bit of a pattern. It, it gives you the impression that the path is a little bit older, that maybe it's a little bit more worn. It also gives us this variety. We only have a limited number of paths in the game. And I didn't want to use another custom pattern because the more custom patterns you use, the slower the game loads. And so I'm trying really hard to utilize the paths that we have. So creating this little checkerboard path is a really good way of creating a custom path, but using the items that the game provides. It also helps to free up spots. I knew that I was going to be using a lot of custom design spots for this build. And not using so many custom paths is one really good way of saving up spots. I do have my one little rock path that you've seen in different places. But other than that, I'm trying to stick with the ones that are in the game. The pine trees in this game are both beautiful and useful. Starting on December 15th, some of those trees at random will be strung up with beautiful Christmas twinkle lights. I love that they have added twinkle lights into the game. You can see what those look like during the day on the tree next to me in the video right now. It, of course, looks really beautiful on the trees at night. You can't choose where these are going to show up. It is completely random and not all the trees will have them. And if you pick a tree up with a piece of fruit to put it back down again, it's not going to move the Christmas lights. So just hope you get them where you want them. The important part is that if you shake the tree, it will drop red, blue, and yellow Christmas ornaments, and those are used as a resource for crafting the Christmas DIY recipes that you get from balloons in December. It's also important to note that some of the Christmas DIY recipes are going to need acorns and pine cones, so be sure to shake your trees before the end of fall so that you have a lot of that resource on hand when you get to Christmas. I'm putting in a little bit of a stone kind of a patio area in this space. I wanted a little bit of a cafe, outdoor seating look. I felt like this is up in the woods, just a little out of town, but it's also where you could look up over town and the kind of place that would be really beautiful during Christmas time to sit and enjoy a hot chocolate 
and look out at the lights over town. It's the kind of place I want to go. So I decided to create one in the game. I'm just putting a little bit of the iron furniture down. And you'll see that candle on the table is one of the Christmas items that I was talking about. And then I move across the path and I'm putting down what will be the Christmas farm reception desk area. I am using the kimono stand. And I wanted to do that because I wanted a space that looked temporary, not necessarily a building that was always standing, but more like they put it up just to sell the Christmas trees when it was that time of year. It just got a little bit of gaps between it and it's not perfect, but I really enjoyed that it was different than the other building or construction options that we use in the game. And so trading it up was refreshing, at least for me. I customized the kimono stands with one of the custom patterns from the Able Shop. So again, it doesn't use one of my personal custom pattern slots again. There are a few patterns in there that are really good for Christmas, in particular, this little stripe red and green. The green is a good way to bring in some of the Christmas color in that area. I have a bunch of fun items that I'm just placing down in different spaces here. This is typical for me in a build where I get the structure down. I've got, you know, fences and walls and paths. And then I have all the fun little items that are in my pocket. And so I start moving around the area a lot because I'm mostly putting down whatever is next in my pocket. Um, so here you can see I've added a desk and I'm just putting some decorations. I use a magazine to look uh, like a little bit of a reception desk check-in book and I'm adding those garden gnomes and the garden gnomes again we're going to pretend like they are Santa's elves and clearly they would be helping out here in the Christmas tree farm so I get a couple of them down and a few more decorations and now I am roughening up this path I have a few custom patterns that I use just the little dirt path kind of basic brown spots and some little green spots that work as like a plant. And I'm just working up and down the path, adding in a transparent spot so that nothing grows and a little bit of the dirt and leaves. It helps create a, a more dynamic looking path when it is using all the different things. It becomes cohesive, even though it wasn't meant to be. That's it for this area, guys. Let's go take a tour and I'll show you how it came out. I've got that little Christmas tree farm sign right at the entrance. We're going to head into the reception desk, check in with our little Christmas elves. I really like the way that the iron looks for Christmas time, the iron garden table and chairs. Here's where I have the smaller trees. There are little tree saplings you can see planted in between to keep them from growing any bigger so they'll stay small all year long. I've got a video on how to do that that I'll link up here in the top of the video. I added the wood burning stove here just to give it that wholesome look. There are a lot of the bamboo lanterns along the path. I wanted to create a little bit of a luminary effect so that the path, even though there are street lamps, I wanted the path to feel warm and kind of candle lit. Tucked back here is another little gnome. He's got a ladder because he's getting ready to chop a tree down for somebody. I like the way that they're just secretly tucked in little places here and there on the island, busy working and getting ready for Christmas. And then down into the farm area, you can see I have filmed it when the pumpkins aren't fully grown. I'll do that probably for the dream address too, because now they could be a lot of different things. I think it would be really good if we go ahead and tour this at night. As with some of the other Christmas videos, the lights come on and it really does make a difference in how the different areas feel. So once we're done looking at it here in the daytime, let's pop over real fast and look at what it looks like with the lights on at night. All right, guys, it's nighttime and I'm walking through this area. Again, you can see how the bamboo lanterns have that soft luminary type of glow to them. 
just that almost as if there was little candles in lighting the path along the way and I really love the effect that that gives. That'll do it for today guys. I hope you found something useful here and that you continue creating in this game. Until next time, have the best Animal Crossing day.